I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Hello and welcome back. Um, part two. One of the most gratifying things, if it's not in too bad a shape, but one of the most gratifying things about um, finding old radios that haven't been abused is when you can really clean them up pretty well without too much work. Um, this plastic has some scratching right here and it's, it's kind of scratched throughout. So we'll do the usual uh, to polish that up. But overall, that looks pretty good. Not bad. This, on the other hand, has had nothing done to it yet. This is where the real work is, of course. So what I wanted to do is discuss how this works before we get started repairing it. Um, it's in essence a three band radio, as you'll recall. It has a standard broadcast band right here. Then it has an early FM band, the pre-war pre band F for FM was, was uh, they call it the 45 mega, mega cycle band, but it goes down to 41 or so and up to about 50 megahertz. The modern FM band uh, came out, uh, was declared by the FCC during World War II, 1942 or 43. And it has the usual uh, range of frequencies in the FM 100 band. Um, so it's a three band radio um, in that sense. Two FM, one AM. And it's a nine tube chassis. Um, so it's different than an All-American 5, of course, uh, in that it picks up FM as well as AM. But l what I want to do is go through the schematic and kind of block this out for us, for you and for myself, uh, to see generally what the layout is and how this works. So let's do that. We'll start with uh, getting the uh, schematics on the computer and uh, start to examine what, what all the elements do. Not in great tedious detail, but uh, enough to, to give us a good, good grounding of, of how this, um, this chassis works. So let's start that. What I want to do now is talk about how this Zenith 9021 works. And we'll start with a block diagram um, look at just the AM section. And part of the reason for doing this is that um, if you look at uh, if you look at a uh, straight AM radio, it's pretty straightforward. If you look at the schematic for an AM FM radio, even if the FM is mono, it begins to look kind of scary. Um, and so part of this exercise is to show that it's not really scary that the FM section ad is added on to the uh, AM section. Uh, and the fact that it's mono helps a bit because uh, we don't have to try to figure out uh, how to, how to uh, discriminate between left and right channels in a stereo FM uh, system. And it's not a particularly, it isn't, <laughs> I was going to say it's not particularly high fidelity. It is not a high fidelity uh, radio. It's good for its day, but boy, you can, you could, you could buy a lot better ones uh, than this. Not that there's anything wrong with this, but it, it could be improved on. So let's start with uh, a block diagram of just the, um, the AM section, the broadcast section. And uh, if you're not interested in, in following along, feel free to skip this one, and I'll see you next time. For those of you who want to uh, look in on it, uh, let's take a look at how this thing works. And then once we're through the block diagram, uh, we'll go back over uh, and pick up the sections that we talk about in the schematic. Pick those out of the schematic so you can see where they are. So the very first thing that happens is we get an antenna. 
antenna for broadcast uh, in these days, these days being the late 40s, could either be a long wire or it could be a, um, a, a, a real antenna, a spool, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, that goes in the back of the chassis. Zenith offered both of those. Uh, this particular model had, did not have a built-in AM antenna. It just has provisions for a long wire connection to Earth and to, uh, to uh, the long wire. Uh, so the antenna is picking up all radio frequencies. You can design an antenna to narrow the, the frequencies it picks up a bit, but for our purposes, it's picking up all broadcast frequencies, all at the same time. Uh, some some frequencies with more more signal than others, but it's picking them all up. So the next thing you have to do is try to figure out how to to uh, get the one you want. So first you couple the, and in this case, in the Zenith 9E21, uh, you couple the antenna directly, or almost directly, to an RF amplifier. And that boosts the RF uh, signal containing the intelligence we want. Remember, the goal is to uh, pick up only a carrier frequency that we want, containing the audio information that we want. So. If we amplify them, generally all of them, as best we can, uh, we'll have a much better chance of, of um, picking the station that we want out of the air. So this is the RF amplifier. It's uh, In this case, it's a 6BA6 amplifier, a tube amplifier. Uh, the signal that you see here is what goes into the grid. So the antenna is, in essence, not literally, but in essence, coupled directly to the grid of uh, the 6BA6 uh, where it's amplified. Uh, from the plate of the uh, RF amplifier, we couple that into one half of our very first um, uh, RF transformer. In Zenith's case, they call it an AM detector coil. There are other names for it, but it's the, uh, the first place that the signal from the antenna is introduced. In this case, it's a step-up coil. This, this will amplify the voltage a little bit uh, before it sends it on to the next stage, which is the converter. Now, the converter is an interesting bit of technology. This goes back to the whole concept of super heterodyning. If you take a signal and you mix it with another signal, uh, the re uh, in, the, in this converter tube, which is a 6BE6, you'll get both the original signal and the uh, introduced signal, the local oscillator signal, and the difference and the sum of those two are all available at the plate of the converter tube. So what the radio engineers do is they take uh, that stream of RF signals that's coming in from the uh, RF amp and they mix it with a um, signal from a local oscillator. In the case of AM, the local oscillator is oscillating at, uh, usually uh, for American sets, uh, or for modern, modern being 1940s sets. It was the, uh, the broadcast frequency that you're interested in plus 455. So if you're interested in, let's say a thousand kilocycles. Uh, you'll uh, create an oscillator that generates 1,455 kilocycles, put that signal up into the converter, and then at the output of the converter you'll have uh, the original 1,000 kilocycles, the 1,455 kilocycles, the uh, 455 kilocycles, and by doing that you've created the first IF signal that will come out of the converter. So coming out of the converter on the right-hand side is the first IF at 455 kilohertz. Could be 465, could be for whatever you want, but that's how it's designed. So now we have our, uh, and what I'm leaving out here is a bunch of, of gained capacitors that make sure that these are all being uh, tuned uh, to the same place at the same time. Uh, but this is just an overview. So now, after the converter, we have a 455 kilocycle um, 
carrier wave, in essence, with our audio information on top of that. Goes through another, uh, goes through the first IF transformer. And let's see, does this one do any gain? No, this is straight. Uh, so this is a straight, straight magnetic uh, transfer, electromagnetic transfer of the IF signal into the first IF amp. The first IF amp is a 6AU6, and its entire job is to amplify that that uh, IF signal with its uh, uh, attached audio. From there, we go into another IF transformer and a second IF amp. All we're doing is getting that signal up as big as we can make it without distorting it too badly. Um, and let me see if there's any gain in the second IF. Nope, it's a straight through too, so no gain. It's not a step up like this one was. Um, so we've gotten into the second IF amp, which is also a, um, a, a 6AU6, and we take the output of that and feed it through another uh, transformer into the detector in the first audio amplifier. The detector is where we trim the carrier wave, the 1000 kilohertz, for example, uh, away from the audio signal that's riding on top of it. So this is where the, the uh, audio signal gets stripped away, and or the uh, carrier signal gets stripped away, and we're left with pure audio, and we're going into the first um, audio, transfer, or, uh, audio amplifier here. This is a 6T8 in this set. And finally, that gets pumped out to the power amplifier through a capacitor. And now notice it's not transformed. It doesn't need to be. Uh, we're just sending audio frequency information uh, directly to the power amplifier. The power amplifier sends it to the output transformer. The output transformer steps down the audio and creates sound out the loudspeaker. And you know, and that's kind of fundamentally how all uh, AM radios work. There are variations, certainly. A lot of AMs only have one IF amp. Uh, some of these, you know, a lot don't have an RF amp. The converter, one part of the converter tube will take on the responsibility of, of amplifying the RF a bit. So there are all kinds of ways to do this, but this is generally how they all work. And this is how this 9E21 works. Now, interestingly enough, to give you a sense of what kind of work this is doing, um, I've added in the the amplification gain for each of these stages. And one of these doesn't make any sense to me. And that's this one right here. I have not figured out yet how they're going to get a two, K, two times gain of the RF signal from the antenna before it enters the RF amp. There isn't much in there. There is a, an antenna coil, um, and maybe that provides a little bit of gain, but I don't know. Um, but after the RF amp, this RF amp, in fact, provides, plus this step-up transformer here, provides 7x gain once it gets to the converter. The converter does what the converter does, and it passes it on uh, with a little bit more amplification of 5.7 times to the first IF. The first IF bumps it up by 11. The second IF bumps it up by another 11. And by this time, when we get through the detector, all we've got is audio, and the detector amplifies it by 50 times. The power amplifier doesn't amplify too much, but it creates a lot of current so that we can drive this speaker. Um, and having said that, I'm not sure that's true. The power amplifier tube, uh, 6V6 in this case, uh, does amplify. So I think that 50 is probably more associated with the power amplifier. Um, Anyway, we get one watt of audio power out to the speaker. Uh, it's a big, it's a big speaker in this in this instance. This power amplifier, this six v six, by the way, uh, the last Zenith we worked on had a push pull uh, output scheme where there were two six v sixes, each working fifty percent of the time. This guy works one hundred percent of the time, so it's worked pretty hard to provide this one watt of audio output. But generally, you know, that's a lot of amplification, no matter what the details are and where it actually comes from. Um, but you have to do that because the little tiny electromagnetic signal that's getting picked up by these wires over here is pretty darn minuscule. 
So there's our block diagram, uh, and we'll stop for this video, and uh, the next video we'll start relating this block diagram to the AM schematic, the section, AM section of the schematic for the uh, 9E21. So that's it for now. Uh, take care, and I'll see you next time.